Take a close look. The Canadian dollar has a significant empty zone. Ethereum looks a bit better. Bitcoin, let's just say, I'm not a fan at all. Honestly, I haven't seen such heavy forex in a long time. Uh, check out this level. It was a very strong one before the price went up and down around this level. There's no point in even watching such a level now. So this is what we basically have. This one level stayed with us, but the price fluctuated around this level as well, if you look closely. Here's the first decent level. Very tough zone. Let me explain something here. Unfortunately, there are times in the market when everyone gets effed up, no matter how hard you try. If you watch how the asset behaves, you'll see this is the spot where things will just tear you apart. Let's move to the hourly chart. It's impossible to handle. Take a look at what's happening. Not a single stop loss order will hold. Not a single normal stop loss order of 20, 30 points will last. So my advice is this. Don't get into the euro just yet because there's nothing here right now. Understand that sometimes the market simply won't let you make money, no matter what. And very often you start blaming yourself. You might think that when something goes wrong, it's your mistake or problem. But fortunately or unfortunately, when things go south, it's not always your fault. Sadly, there are often situations where the market just doesn't move. You should focus on trading only very strong setups. Forex has become very challenging. I mentioned something very important in one of the recent webinars. When there's nothing to trade in the Forex market, you need to explore other markets. My advice is simple. Forex traders have one big problem. They think other markets don't exist. Every market offers opportunities to make money. If you couldn't make money in Forex today, you can make money in crypto tomorrow. For instance, if you made money in crypto but it suddenly stopped working out for you, you can switch to trading the stock market. At Gut Chicken Co., we offer stocks and Forex. If you want to trade crypto, feel free to do so, but we don't offer it. When the market is favorable, you must stay in it. When the market is dead, you must trade in markets that are active. Now, I'll show you that many of you are trying to trade the euro, but unfortunately, there's nothing happening with it. The euro is literally not moving anywhere. These entered the short zone out of nowhere. See? Nothing happened. There were no signs of trouble. These closed normally and then just dropped. When I see setups like these, I think JPY might be worth looking at. Uh, let's take a look at the JPY. Now, let me explain why I like JPY too. Look closely. You see, the first time we went to storm the highs, the Japanese yen is slowly depreciating against the US dollar. Those large sharp bars you see, that's the Japanese trying to intervene. Look carefully. We tested it, made a false breakout, pulled back, and now we're heading back up. The pullback wasn't deep and we're heading back up. After a false breakout, there's no reaction, just a close retest. And if you look at the top, there's nothing but empty space. See how much the yen has depreciated in three years? Almost 60%. There's no turnaround yet. Uh, I don't see any signs of profit taking in terms of open positions. So everything looks pretty good. If the Turkish lira comes out here, look, very often the Turkish lira tries to exit but gets pushed back only to return to the same point and continue. We'll likely see further depreciation of the Turkish lira. In other words, you cannot do anything. The Japanese can't do anything. And unfortunately, interventions aren't helping. Yes, let's move on. Check out the interesting situation with the New Zealand dollar today. Something specifically went wrong with the Kiwi. Uh, the New Zealand dollar usually moves with the Australian pair. But see what happened here. There are no volumes in the Norwegian krone. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the Swiss franc. Uh, I don't really like how it behaves. Therefore, uh, I try not to even bother with Norwegian kroner. It's just a local mini currency of a country with 10 million people uh, just like with the swiss i don't pay much attention to them so let's move on gbpusd looks better you can adapt the levels gbpusd looks better uh, we're looking at gbpusd around 130 135 so let's take a closer look now you see i don't even touch the levels in 2015 when gurchik and co was funded we started and all these levels have been in place since 2015, 2016. I'll remove some along the way, but some levels are actually very strong. I watch whether they work out. 
This is why it's very important to see how the instrument behaves. GBP USD is much stronger than the euro, for instance. This shows that it has untied itself a bit from the dollar, and that's very, very good. Basically, the level of the Canadian dollar is still holding. Here's the old level I set up. It looks really good. Take a close look. The Canadian dollar has a very strong empty zone. If the Canadian dollar really approaches this zone, not much, only 70 points, which for a Canadian is like child's play on the lawn, it looks like it's heading down. So let's move on. It's just a tough channel. We're in a really tough channel right now. Nothing significant yet. Let's see how today's closing of the daily chart goes. Honestly, I love these buyout bars, um, but as you can see, nothing is clear yet. The zone is very difficult. The market is still unclear. You see, BTC is behaving really badly. My personal opinion, and probably a professional one too, is that it seems like BTC will go lower. Ethereum looks a little better than BTC. I don't like BTC's current state at all. Most likely it's going to drop further. Let's move on. Your favorite gold and silver, nothing significant. You see, this is the day we're observing. Although silver looks very good and strong, it seems like it has no intention to go down. And gold isn't looking great either. Let's mark some new levels. Look at gold. It's, uh, it's in a very strong channel. Gold is currently moving within the channel without pulling back. See the interesting paradox here? Usually when gold stays in a channel for a long time, it tends to have very strong exits from the channel, S&P. You see it's hitting new highs. Here, you see I had one level marked. I immediately said we'd break out this level and then move up. Gold doesn't drop when the S&P rises. That's a very strong signal for gold. If gold falls, it'll drag silver with it around 23.93. I think if we break this level, we'll just shoot up to 25 points. So moving on. Here's a good setup. I'll check it out in the evening. Yes, this is 90% news driven. The price touched the level precisely. If we break out this level today, we could see a good move. Okay, next up, you see everything's progressing slowly. Here's CAD JPY, a new level, and most likely will move further up. Look at the trend. All CAD JPY pairs are heading in the same direction. Everything else, like EUR JPY, will be soaring. Everything looks really good and absolutely reasonable. I think the Japanese yen will weaken. I think Zoom will drop probably below 50 cigars. I'll send a message right now. Hello, everyone. Bet on Zoom going below $56. I think this stock will tank. It's worth much less than the market value. See, Tesla keeps going even after such growth. Carvana looks really good. This one will be on my short list soon. I really like Carvana. Next up is Intel. Intel continues to look really solid around $35. It had a strong accumulation phase. Remember this, what I'm showing you are the basics. Building a strong strategy starts with these fundamentals. Let me explain why. Take a look at Intel. It's similar to Tesla in some ways. See why I'm bullish on Intel? Look closely. Intel clearly supports the lower boundary of its channel, just like Tesla, which had strong accumulation. Tesla circled around more, came out of the channel, then got back in. Tesla was cruising in the channel, made a false breakout of the channel boundary, and returned back to the channel. When I called it, Tesla was around $190 each. Tesla performed well at the top. It had a wide range, and that's approximately where Tesla could go. Now, look closely. See, $265. Look at where Tesla has reached. If Tesla can hold this level and break out this level, see, $265, it could soar higher. The key here is understanding how the asset behaves, its accumulation, and its overall market behavior.